to me, the best marks and the most successful paintings are the ones where what's on the canvas is only there because it's necessary. This is the architect's house, um, which is probably the key, or at least the gateway into the rest of the series, because it's the one image that's explicitly of crew, as well as a moment of narrative, and the realization that the characters, and in this case, the two characters that, that get repeated elsewhere, are part of a film set, and you realize that the whole series then is part of the same Project. The eponymous architect has been found dead in his beautiful John Lautner style house and uh, his wife is being interviewed by detectives and the forensics are there photographing him. But the moment is actually uh, a failure within that narrative. It's the moment where the actor starts corpsing, the corpse corpses and the performers around him also burst into laughter. I was fascinated with the idea of someone who's so integral to the structure and the infrastructure of a city being at the heart of uh, its, its, its demise or its, uh, its, its breakdown. The, the house itself um, was uh, a 1 to 20 scale model, which all of the models tend to be. We, we make far more than we probably need to in terms of props sometimes and we make them in far more detail than we sometimes need to but it's nice to have that detail there just in case something ends up catching the light or doing something and um, it's one of the things I'm always saying in the studios oh it'd be fine it's only going to end up being a blip of paint um, but it does it does make a difference even if it is just a little dab here and there it, it's it's what lifts images at the end of the day this one um, is called night kitchen um, and is the least disastrous in a sense of the whole series, but perhaps probably the most, um, in the sense that none of them allude to what the disaster might be, except within this image we have a little boy under the table who's playing with his dinosaur and Lego and toy soldiers and cars and reenacting his own fictional disaster. The other link of this uh, picture to the, to the disaster is the fact that the man on the telephone and the supposed father of these three kids appears as the waiter in the image of the pool party. So I generally have a fairly strong instinct for what I want from a composition, but I always allow that to change as soon as anyone comes into the studio. And I, I generally treat it as one would a film shoot and just take hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pictures. I then will edit from all of those pictures. I'll take a hand here, I'll, I'll take a, a look there and slowly build and, and, and edit the performances together in a sense to a final moment. Quite often I get described as a photorealist which I'm, I'm not in any way, shape or form. Um, I would happily would happily do all of these things from, from, from life if it were necessary, but ultimately it's not really about my relationship with the people in that kind of direct way. At the end of the day, uh, I, I remove as much as I possibly can or edit out from pictures because the cameras see more than your eye does. There is still a huge degree of suspicion over the kind of grand scale realist paintings that I make. Um, the essential reason that I stopped painting um, age 19 or whatever it was, and I didn't start, I didn't make another oil painting on canvas until I was 32. So the reason for that hiatus was the belief that it wasn't possible, that painting of this kind is and always will be an anachronism. And it took me a long time to realize that actually it's very obsolescence is what gives it its role now. It's what makes it uh, very exciting.